Okay, guys, on to our next um, topic, and this topic is going to be pernicious anemia. Again, this is a quick review just to prepare you for your exam, your NCLEX exam, or your regular classroom exam, okay? So again, the focus is on anemia, this topic, pernicious anemia, causes, treatments, and let's get to it. Pernicious anemia, what is going on here? What's causing this problem? Remember that your stomach, in your stomach you have cells called parietal cells, and these parietal, parietal cells produce something called intrinsic factor, IF. Intrinsic factor, its purpose is to absorb vitamin B12. So let's say that a patient had some type of um, stomach surgery, like a gastric bypass surgery, if those portions of the stomach which produce intrinsic factor, the cells, the parietal cells have been removed, then you no longer have intrinsic factor in your body, so you can't absorb vitamin B12. Other things that might affect um, the, the uh, production of intrinsic factor or that might affect parietal cells would be something like gastritis in patients that are, have a chronic use of alcohol or, or are chronic alcohol users, okay? That will also affect your parietal cells in your stomach. Another thing that would cause problems with your parietal cells is gastritis, again, inflammation of the stomach. Another thing that will affect the parietal cells is patients with a history of heartburn. Remember that patients that have heartburn will take a couple of medications, maybe something like a proton pump inhibitor, and H2 histamine receptor blocker. Remember that these medications are designed to decrease stomach acidity so you don't have that reflux, that heartburn. So if you reduce the stomach acidity, it's gonna affect the amount of absorption of vitamin B12 in your stomach, in your ileum, okay? So again, if you decrease gastric acidity, it is gonna affect how you absorb certain nutrients, and in this case, vitamin B12. Also, if you've had uh, problems uh, with your small bowel, in this case, again, the ileum, the proximal portion of the ileum where vitamin B12 absorption takes place, if that's been resected, you can no longer absorb vitamin B12. So, always ask your, uh, your patient questions. Any type of abdominal surgery, stomach surgery, small bowel surgery, are you in any type of proton pump inhibitor, any medications for heartburn? because this will affect the absorption of vitamin B12. Now let's move on um, to some other things. Pernicious anemia will typically affect patients in the age range of 40 to 60 years old. So this will differentiate it from something like um, iron deficiency anemia, okay? So typically, look at that range between 40 and 60 years old. So make sure you know those age ranges just so if, if, in case it pops up on your exam. Now some of the clinical manifestations that the patient may show be some of the following weakness, that's just due to the anemia, uh, paresthesia due to lack of vitamin B12 and that would be just pain in the extremities and confusion and also if the dementia excuse me if the anemia is severe enough uh, again you will have confusion along with some dementia altered mental status now one way to diagnose um, pernicious anemia the one that might show up on your exam would be by doing something called a Schilling test. Now, what will now now what a now what a Schilling test will do will be to or what now what a Schilling test does is it actually tests parietal cells to see if your body your parietal cells are producing intrinsic factor. So again, on your exam, if you see anything, how would you look for pernicious anemia? You see something called Schilling test on there. That's your money maker. That's the thing that you want to choose because again, the Schilling test just to hit it again, is it is designed to, ch uh, to test, check your parietal cells to see if they are producing intrinsic factor. And remember, intrinsic factor is necessary to absorb vitamin B12. So patients, if you were to give them an increased dose of vitamin B12 orally, 
It's not going to do anything if they have no intrinsic factor because those cells cannot absorb vitamin B12. So how do you check for it? You do the Schilling test, okay? Remember that for your exam. Now, how, how does somebody um, get treated for this? The answer would be either by parenteral or intranasal administration of vitamin B12. Okay, so again, for your test question, unlike iron, iron, uh, iron deficiency anemia, where you give PO medication, you cannot do that for pernicious anemia. Again, your routes of administration would be uh, parenteral or intranasal medication. Okay? Now, remember that because a person cannot ingest the vitamin B12, it cannot be absorbed, these medications will be maintained throughout a person's lifetime. If you take this, either the parenteral or intranasal um, administration of vitamin B12, then you eliminate how a patient is receiving that medication. So again, this medication will be need to be continued throughout a, a person's lifespan. So don't forget that on your test. Um, maybe they'll ask, will, will you give it for a certain amount of weeks, months, maybe a year or two? And the answer would be, it'll be given throughout a person's lifetime. Okay, let's quick, again, do quick review. Pernicious anemia, what is it caused by? By lack of intrinsic factor. Either your own immune system is attacking your parietal cells, or you've had some type of abdominal surgery, so your body cannot absorb vitamin B12. Okay, so how do you fix that? Well, you, you either administer a medication parenterally or intranasally. And that's how you take care of that problem. One way to check for pernicious anemia would be to do something called a Schilling's test, which, which would again check your parietal cells to see if you are producing intrinsic factor or not. Okay, so remember that for your exam next time. Again, if you have any questions or comments, please write them below. And I'd be here, I'm here. Again, if you have any questions or comments, please write them down below and I'd be happy to help out. Have a good day.